Hi, I'm Michael and this is California. And with 2020 having been a rough year for the American worker, it's been even more difficult for older workers. With the pandemic, with the lockdowns, the layoffs, and people simply not spending the money that they do have, the Social Security program, which was already in dire straits before the pandemic, is going to have to make some serious decisions in the coming year to ensure it can maintain those benefits that millions of older Americans rely on to survive. Although the current beneficiaries, they should be the primary concern, there are some politically unpopular but necessary steps that will need to be taken, hopefully sooner rather than later, to make sure Social Security benefits are here for younger generations as well. This even as they see their retirement finish lines seemingly get farther and farther away, despite working more and more years. At the moment, there are a number of potential fixes that have been batted around for the last few years. But with the increased pressure put on the Social Security retirement system by the pandemic, it will be up to our Congress, the White House, and the American people as a whole to decide which of the distasteful solutions will be best to save our Social Security retirement benefits for generations to come. So today we are talking about the increasingly untenable Social Security retirement scheme, how the pandemic has actually made its problems worse, and what are some of the potential fixes. Now, this is your daily dose, and before we get to it, if you like this information, if you find it interesting, if you find it helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you can get updates when our newest and most informative videos become available. So let's first talk about how the Social Security Retirement Program got into this diminished state, and what are some of the recent factors that have only made it worse. According to the most recent Social Security Trustees report from 2020, it anticipates that if nothing changes, the Social Security Retirement Trust Fund would start running out of money as of 2034. But given the time frame of the last recent report, it only used 2019 data to make its estimation, and it excluded any of the worsening factors that came as a result of the continuing pandemic and the lockdown. Now, although we will not see the new updated report for a few more months, there is no doubt that the huge spike in unemployment, the equally large decrease in payroll tax, and the increased number of Americans who are now deciding to start to take their Social Security retirement benefits early, before their full retirement age, will really truncate the viability of the Social Security program by years. To make matters worse, once Social Security does hit its funding wall, not only will benefits have to be reduced because of a lack of money, but also because if Congress does nothing to make any changes to the current scheme as a whole, once the trust fund is empty, there will be an additional 20 to 25% reduction in all benefits across the board as a safety measure. As an example of just how close the program really is to getting to be into dangerous financial territory, for the year of 2020, even prior to all the pandemic chaos, it was anticipated to be the first year that the Social Security benefits paid out from the Social Security Retirement Program would actually exceed the revenue or the taxes that were being brought into the Social Security Trust Fund. Undoubtedly, there is a lot of pessimism towards the stability of the current Social Security Program, which is really sad because it is such a beloved program with favorability ratings by Americans pretty much higher than any other politician, any other program or institution next to bald eagles, to freedom, and 4th of July barbecues. So now the question becomes, what can be done? But luckily there are some solutions that have been out there over the last few years, and all of them will either mean higher taxes, later retirement ages, or lower benefits for retirees. This means there isn't really a one best option or another, but a mixture of changes that are politically possible and a balancing act of the pain of cuts in benefits and the squeeze of increases in payroll taxes with the benefits of long-term sustainability within the Social Security program. At the moment, it is important to note that although President Biden can have input into what is the best way to move forward with the Social Security program, it is Congress who ultimately will have to work out a compromise about what changes should be made. So what can they do? Congress, under different presidential administrations, have definitely made changes to the Social Security program over the last few years. In 1972, they added the very popular cost of living adjustment, that's the COLA, that usually increases a person's Social Security benefits a little bit every single year to keep up with inflation and the cost of living. Also in 1983, in an attempt to improve the program's longevity, under President Reagan, the full retirement age was increased to 67 years old, and payroll taxes were actually increased. 
Currently, only income up to $142,800 a year is taxed for the purposes of Social Security. But Biden has proposed to increase that amount to any income over $400,000 a year. Also, he would gradually increase the amount that we all pay into Social Security by increasing the tax from 12.4%, where it sits right now, up to 14.8%. But even with these changes, they would only increase the sustainability of the Social Security program by a few additional years. Realistically, some of the more drastic, necessary, and really politically unpopular changes will be needed to be made to make sure the program can go the distance. In order the most politically favorable all the way down to political landmine level, first they could increase the amount that wealthy Americans pay even more into the Social Security Trust Fund, and then match that with a decrease in just wealthy beneficiaries' benefits. Next, they'd be able to extend the age of full retirement age even older, which would mean folks who are in my generation may not be able to retire until they're in their mid-70s. And last and most devastating would be to start decreasing benefits that existing Social Security beneficiaries are already receiving. And that is really a recipe for a political and social nightmare. Unfortunately, none of these are ever going to be popular, but without them, it will result in a catastrophic failure of the program. One last possible contemporary fix could be to increase the federal minimum wage to $15. Although this would essentially be forcing businesses to pay for social programs, it would allow lower income workers to contribute more into their social security trust fund and younger workers to put more money over a longer period of time into it as well, which would help level out some of the differences between the program's expenses and its revenues. Although I'm not quite sure where it would fall on the political palatability scale. Overall, there are going to be some tough decisions made in the not-so-distant future about how to fix the Social Security Retirement Program. And the decision will be tough because no matter what solution or combination of solutions that are used, it will disrupt the status quo. And there will be winners and there will be losers. This could be a great time, though, for legislators and we as Americans as a whole to look at the Social Security Program and make a decision about what the goal of the program really is. Initially, it started out as a means to have a basic level guaranteed benefit, like a pension, to help seniors live out their lives with dignity. But over time, it has morphed into a mixture of an anti-poverty program, a form of disability, and a means to mitigate some of the costs associated with aging. But we see now that it really cannot be everything to everyone. My hope is that whatever is decided to do, it stays true to the original goal of ensuring that anybody who has paid in will have enough coming out to live out their lives without the fear of poverty. Now, this has been your Daily Dose, and I hope that you found it interesting or helpful or at least useful. And if you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you can get updates when our newest and most informative videos become available. Now, that's it for me and for California. I'm Michael, wishing you a happy, healthy day.